Hello, fam. Okay, so a couple, couple things going on in this video before we even get to this guy. Um, first of all, I am going on a diet and I think I have a job. I think I have a job. Um, uh, so more news on that as it comes. The main thing is uh, combine all that with, you know, my still taking care of a toddler. And uh, I don't think I'll have t the time to do these things with the frequency that I have been. I'm going to still try for two times a week, but um, it may not happen. Anyways, um, uh, moving on. Because this is a video full of, of new things. So this is a, this is a Baijiu. Um, now, I, I, uh, so I should tell you the, the history of how I came to buy this. Um, I had, had it on my shopping list for a long time. It was the only Baijiu available uh, at my local um, liquor store. Um, and when I went in there uh, to you know find something fun um, and basically didn't have anything, I said, what the hell, I'll, I'll, I'll buy this stuff. Um, and uh, so, okay, so Baijiu is a grain-based spirit, right? So they don't put it in the whiskey section uh, even though there are Japanese and Indian whiskeys there, even though there's White Dog and New Make in there sometimes, they, they did not put in the whiskey section. They did have listed as Vodka uh, common, Kama Other on their website. Uh, but when I looked through the vodkas, I didn't find it there. I finally had to ask someone, you know, where the hell did you put the Baijo? And they, they pointed me to the back of the store next to the kosher wines um, in this little, you know, kind of, you know, walled off section with the sake and the, the, uh, shochu and sort of all the Eastern stuff, you know, the, the serious drinkers don't, don't bother with, I guess. Um, which, and I think that's kind of indicative of the, the esteem with which this, things like this are held. Um, there's not a lot of discussion of Baijo. Um, among the sort of reviewers like me. Um, and it's usually taken not so much as, you know, a, a joke, it's just a curiosity. You know, it's, not, it's, it's just not to be taken as seriously as whiskey or, you know, uh, even like rum or some of those other kinds of things. Um, so, uh, but this, this struck me as something that might be... Um, well, first of all, let me say, I think that that is the wrong opinion to have for a variety of reasons, but um, well, let's get into this. So this is Ming River uh, by Joe. Um, this is a uh, being brought in by um, Park Street Imports in Miami. Uh, I think they have worldwide distribution, but I'm not sure. Um, but they are, de they are definitely in the US. Um, so it's 45% ABV. Um, now that is uh, now most of the stuff coming out of this distillery is 52. I don't know where the extra seven percent went, but you know it's the only thing I would knock the importers for. This this bottle is actually just for me. It's just the right amount of quiche. Um, I really like this bottle. Um, so the the thing is, they could have gone for like a crap producer, right? They could have easily um, done that, but they didn't. They went to. Um, Get their Baijiu from uh, uh, Lu Sao Lao Jiao. You're, I'm, gonna, I'm American. I'm, I'm going to butcher all these names, but you know, bear with me. Um, Lu Sao Lao Jiao has been making Baijiu uh, in Sichuan uh, for a very, very long time. Um, uh, they are the oldest distillery in Sichuan and the oldest distillery in China, and I think that makes them the oldest distillery in the world. Um, they're older than Mount Gay. Even if Bushmills had been founded at the time that they claim Bushmills is founded in that, that's kind of, you know, questionable, um, they would still be older than Bushmills by over a century. They've been making Baijo since, you know, 1573, um, to give you some sense of the, of the scale involved. So, you know, if you're going to make fun of these guys on your little Facebook about stinky, stinky Baijo, um, you know, keep in mind, they've been doing this for longer than anyone in Scotland, um, anywhere in Ireland, rum, just pick, pick, your, pick your producer, these guys are older. Um, no information on the distillate, on this particular bottling beyond that, they're, they're, they, they mention it's um, less than two years old, um, but 
no further me let mention of how this falls in the, the Luzo Laojiao lineup beyond that. So um, a little one more word on, on this particular distillery. Um, so they make uh, Baijiu in the so-called um, non-xiang style. Again, apologize for pronunciation. Um, the uh, strong smelling, strong aroma style. In fact, it's 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 so associated with this with this style that it's that that is occasionally called the Luxiang style. So after this distillery, um, oh yeah, I'm, I'm still going to talk a little bit more about Baijiu before we actually get started in the review. I'll, I'll put a link in the description if you just want to like skip there. Um, so this is totally different from any, it's just an entirely different way of thinking about distillation. Um, as a point of comparison, I think whiskey is, is useful because it's also a, a grain-based spirit, right? So whiskey, how, how do you make whiskey, right? The one thing, every, tons of different ways, but the one thing everyone has in common is they eventually at some point make a beer that they then, then distill, right? So you start with your, you know, malted barley, you have to malt it, right? And maybe you smoke the barley in order to, to, to get it all dried. Um, or you start with a, with a mash, you start with whatever it is you start with, then you grind it up and you put it in a lot of water and um, you ferment it. Yeast is, you're using wild yeast, you're using, um, you know, yeast from a, mat, from a sour mash, using yeast from a bag. Uh, doesn't matter, yeast gets in somehow and it ferments and you get uh, a beer, uh, which we call a, a wash, sometimes low wines, although I think, I think wash is probably more widespread. And uh, I'm gonna put a splash of water in this. And then from there, you put it in whatever kind of distilling equipment um, you're using, pot stills, column stills, hybrids, whatever, um, usually metal of some kind. And uh, that's where your whiskey comes from. You, you, well, you, first you have to put it in oak, for a couple of years, and then and then then it's whiskey. Um, so just to indicate how different this is, there's no wash, there's no beer, there's no low wines, there's no wash going into making uh, this stuff. What they are doing is they're taking their their grains. So it's mostly sorghum. Um, again, I have no idea of the may, may, uh, grain makeup of this, but uh, Luzo Laojiao stuff is usually sixty odd percent sorghum. Um, so they're taking your grains. And uh, they're steaming them. They're putting them in a, basically a big steamer, which also acts as a still. And they're steaming the stuff, getting it kind of not really, you know, I guess it's not a beer, but it's, you know, hot and wet. And they're mixing it around with this stuff called chew. Um, now, chew is, is partly yeast, yeast but um, it's really just this kind of biomatter. It's, it's yeast, it's fungus. It's bacteria. It's a kind of biomaterial re representation of the the terroir. It's very environment based. So, and they sell it in these bricks or these pellets. And in any case, um, so it's just it's just biological stuff that represents the land. Um, and they're mixing around uh, with the grains. You know, mixing up, mix it all up with big shovels. And then they bury this stuff in a big pit and cover it over with clay. So whatever whatever it's got to do converting starches to sugars, um, you know, sugars into alcohol. Like it's all just gonna do that, you know, in this pit for as long as it needs. Um, you know, a couple weeks, a couple months. This is a couple of months. This is, I think it's like, it's over a month in any case. Um, then you open up uh, your pit, you, you, you take, uh, take all the clay and mud and stuff you covered up with, take that off. And um, uh, then you, um, you, you take that sort of massive stinky fermented um, grain out and you put it back in your steamer still because the again the still is basically a steamer except it's got this thing on top with some cold water which helps the um, uh, the steam condense so steam comes up steam contains alcohol right because because now there's alcohol in it and uh, you know hits the condenser and it sort of drip all drips down and it comes out and you get your vijo and then you age it you do not age it in wood um, it's wrong to say this is unaged, even though, even though it's it's obviously you know transparent. This is aged, but it's aged in ceramic. It's aged in clay on these big sort of basically terracotta um, amphora that they have. These jars, which still breathe. It's, there's still you know air interaction between the air and the environment and the spirit. There's just no wood going into it. Um, and then I, you know after how long, however long, um, you take this stuff out and. Um, 
you mix it, uh, uh, you blend it, and then um, then you got your baijiu. Um, so it's just a completely different way of, of, of distilling spirit. I mean, you, you go find some some footage or some some photos of the distillery, the interior. It, it looks just otherworldly. It's it's like you know um, Tarkovsky made a movie in in Szechuan or something. It's that different from anything you would find in a in a still anywhere outside of China, um, in a distillery. I mean. Um, uh, and it just puts in relief, you know, when, when little micro distilleries in the U.S. are like, oh, we're totally different because we use 98% rye in our mash rather than 95. Those losers using that 95% rye crap. It's just, you know, this is an entirely different tradition of, of making spirit. Um, and I find that utterly delightful. Um, so you just all this is just to say you cannot go into this with sort of the, the preconceptions of uh, anything else, anything else you've had before this. Um, do have standards because, I mean, there are going to be norms and standards for judging this. Just don't think that, you know, the, the regular, the sorts of characteristics are gonna, you're, you're, you're sort of geared in for are going to be in here. So with all that in mind, let's actually taste this stuff. Um, Thank you for indulging me. I hope some of that was educational, but let's actually get some, some tasting notes on the table. Yeah, I love the nose on this stuff. So it took me a long time for my palate to sort of just figure out what the hell was going on and, and um, start to really grasp uh, what this was about. And again, it's, my, it's the only baijiu I've had. So, but I'm, I'm, you know, I've had others, a ton of other spirits, so I, so I, have, some, I have some time in the, in the war. I love this nose. It's just so different, but you do recognize the balance after a while. You're, you're sort of, um, so it's big. It's sort of just rotting stuff for, <laughs> to start off with. Just like, I mean, rotting pineapple, rotting oranges, rotting like cantaloupe, but also like just stinky cheese. There's a, there's a lot of stinky shit in this and I really enjoy that. Um, yeah, like smelly French teas. You're getting Munster. You're not real, not like American Munster. This is the real stuff, you know, fresh from Alsace. Roquefort, ton, like just Roquefort forever. Some Mopois, um just some like smelly feet cheese. Um, it, it, this is great. But there's also this sort of herbal element to it. There's some some fennel, more more, more like more black licorice actually than than fennel. Um, but it still has that sort of slightly earthy touch to it. Um, caraway, some, but also some uh, like just garden herbs, like maybe some coriander in there. It's basil? Not, not really basil. Let's go, let's just stick with, with coriander. Um, a little bit of graininess, a little sort of serious, you know, when you go to Whole Foods and you buy some multigrain bread and it's like eight bucks, that, that kind of multigrain that's going on. Um, some like sparkling water. Like you, you went to Intelligentsia and you ordered an espresso, and they gave you a shot of sparkling water, and you don't want to really want to drink it because, but well, you sort of give it a give it a smell. That's coming through. Um, straight up topsoil, honestly, like straight out the truck, and uh, dust like old boxes, like dusty old cardboard boxes. If you ever have like a like a like a closet or something full of those things. And a little bit of jasmine tea. Like not nice, this is like you go to a restaurant and they just throw you some, some free jasmine tea. This is kind of that. But it's really dominated by rotting fruit and rotting cheese and it's just, it's just great. Um, on the palate, Mostly a match for the nose. Oh, it is much more sort of, there's an herbal off dryness to this. Oh, that's really nice. Um, okay, so you're getting rotting stuff again, particularly um, orange and pineapple again. Let's go, go with that. But it's also, there's a kind of fago note. Do you know the soda? Um, like, I would say more orange fago, but there's a little bit of the sort of mix of uh, the orange and the pineapple. So um, 
I don't know. Uh, insane clown, clown posse fans might be into this. Heavy and licorice. Some absinthe in there. Um, yeah, just just anise and fennel and herbs all in my in my mouth. Um, a lot of sort of even beyond the sort of rotting fruit note, there's um, there's some citrus some citrus pith in here, like lemon pith, orange pith, um, um, and that funky all the funky cheeses from the from the nose are all right back. The monster Roquefort thing. Quite medicinal, actually. There's a penicillin note. Um, a little bit metallic. Um, some, it, there are those, those little hints of graininess, like there's a fermenting bread note. Not rotting bread. We're talking like, you know, you pour some water on it and it starts to re-ferment. You know, that kind of thing. Um, Herbaceous, but also just a little bit like floral. Um, like there's, it's like there's a shot of like muscatel or I'm sorry, it would be mus muscato uh, grappa in here. Like really aromatic grappa. Um, and weirdly enough, Lucky Charms. You know the cereal with... Um, the little leprechaun guy, that. There's a little bit of that in there. Sort of more like flavored marshmallows and cereal than, than um, outright, you know, grainy notes. Um, once you get past the sort of totally alien nature of the flavors here, and again, I'm sure this is, this is built for my palate more, as much as any, any Baijo could be. Um, once you get past that, um, this is actually really seductive. This is there's a there's a there's a grace to this and a balance. The way it sort of balances off the the the, the stinkier, nastier elements with that kind of gentle floral sweetness. It's really charming. Um, I kind of know what you're getting into, obviously. Um, but God, God, this is good stuff. Um, so there is a. Well, let me give you a rating first. I really shouldn't. I feel like I shouldn't give you a rating on this because it's my first by Joe, but I will anyways. Um, I'm going to call this an 84 question mark. Question mark being there because obviously I've never had any others, but also there, there's something else and it has to do with this right here. This is a piece of bread. Uh, it's nothing special about it. It's some ciabatta from a local bakery. Um, so uh, I will keep this center of frame. Um, now, if you've been in wine for a while, you will have the following experience. Um, you'll, uh, uh, um, you'll be drinking something and it'll seem well-made, right? Like it was intended to be that way. But at the same time, it'll seem kind of off balance, kind of like it, like it's, you know, there are holes in it, but there's also sort of directions that it's heading in, which, you know, don't seem to make a lot of sense. And you'll, you'll, you'll be trying to sort of keep these things together in your brain. And at some point, someone will explain the trick to you. And the trick is food. Um, you will try the wine with the right food. And sometimes it's, it's wide range, sometimes it's very specific. And the two will elevate each other. Sort of wine will be completed by the food and there will be a synchronicity. There'll be sort of, um, there'll be more than the sum of their parts. Now the thing is, um, I had a similar sensation the first time I tried this. So I did some experiments. I tried this with cheese. I tried this uh, with steak, actually. And the best pairing I had, um, or, or found so far at least, and I'll keep experimenting, is with uh, this bread. Um, this is just a little piece of ciabatta um, from, a, from a bakery down the, down the street. Um, but... Uh, well, I really wish I could pull you through the screen just so I could, I could help you experience the same thing as I'm about to, but uh, here we go. I'm going to pop this in my mouth and try to pause you. <coughs> that is spectacular. 
Oh, geez. Sorry. A little bite went down the, down the wrong pipe. Oh, it's gorgeous. I mean, yeah, this, this, okay. So I've encountered food wines, a lot of, you know, in the wild a ton. I mean, they just go along with the cuisines of the world. This is the first time I've ever encountered a food spirit. I'm sure there are others out there, but this is my first. This is something designed to, I mean, I, you know, it's a piece of bread. And it just like, you know, pushes against this thing and just pushes itself into the stratosphere. It's really amazing. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So that's my, you know, that my last thought with this is try it with food. If, if you know, it's just sitting in your cabinet or you want um, and you, you can't really figure out what to do with it. Try it with some food. That's what it's built for. It, it, it really feels that way. Um, and so with that, I'm going to, I'm going to close this off. Thank you for watching. Um, if you're looking for something totally different, you know, th here it is. I mean, this is in another universe from anything else you've ever tried. So, you know, um, thank you to, uh, who, who is this? Park Street in Miami. Um, they have brought it in. Will you buy it? And uh, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.